So, uh, so uh, we welcome to uh, the Instat Football Webinar, everyone. Um, I'm Leon Mike. I work for Instat. And today we've got uh, Assistant Manager of uh, Accrington Stanley, Jimmy Bell, doing a presentation for us on his week-to-week -week match day presentation. Welcome, Jimmy. Good evening, Leon. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. I'm just going to introduce you, mate. I'm going to embarrass you now and tell, us, tell everyone a little bit about you. Uh, here we go. There we go. So, Jimmy is uh, an assistant manager for Aston United before, well, that's where he started. You that one wrong already, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I've got to put down. Stanley. Accrington Stanley. Or there was. Are you saying there was? Leon. Hello, Leon. Uh, yep, hello. This is not Leon, actually. Um, well, and I guess that he has some technical problems with internet. Um, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Marina, and I work with Instat Marketing Department. So, um, Jimmy, please, let's continue, actually. And I guess that Leon uh, maybe will join us a bit later. So all is fine. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for kindly accepting um, our invitation in uh, participation in our um, football webinar today. And uh, yes, yeah, so uh, maybe you could please start your presentation uh, and uh, tell us about your experience, great experience of working um, uh, in uh, UK clubs and uh, actually using Instant Scout platform. Yeah, well, um, my coaching has spanned just on 25 years now, Marina. Um, a lot of trial and error. Um, getting to where we are now, which is um, the dizzy heights of League One, which is two leagues off, two leagues off the best uh, top league in the world, in my opinion. I know there's a lot of um, very good leagues in the world. Spanish, German, Italian. Uh, yeah. The English game, English game is very, 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 very good uh, and watched throughout the world. Um, and obviously, we've took Little Accrington Stanley from non league, uh, Unibond First Division, which is a couple of leagues, three leagues outside the Football League, and we've taken them to League One um, over the course of. Um, me and John Coleman over the course of 20 years, 1999, when we took over at Accrington Stanley. Uh, and to present, um, we've enjoyed a lot of success. Uh, and we're now, because the league has finished, we've now got another season to look forward to in League One, Marina. Uh, yeah, thank you. And let's check if uh, Leon is here, our moderator. Who is Hi, guys. Yeah. Apologies for the yeah. technical problems there. Thank you so much, Leon. Yeah. Welcome back, yeah. Leon. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so um, Jimmy, if you uh, if you want to continue on. Okay. Where where are we up to, Leon? What? So, in terms of um, sort of your, your, your week to week match day preparation, so that's what you're going to be talking about today. Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm going to be talking about uh, how we prepare for, for games uh, yeah. the, week, the week in general, from okay. finishing one game to kicking off the next game. So, how, how I, how we, Accrington Stanley, the staff, including the manager, uh, the first team coach and myself, how we yeah. prepare the team 
for the game. The, the game in question, what I'm, I'm just going to briefly go over, uh, would have been the, the next game that we were supposed to play before this virus hit us, which was yeah. Portsmouth. And I know I don't want to go too much into it because Portsmouth are in the playoffs at yeah. present against Oxford. Yeah. But this was how I was going to prepare and the team was going to prepare for that particular game. Okay. They mentioned uh, which was Portsmouth away, uh, which would have been our next game. Uh, and if I can just start it off, this would have been my my preparation for that. Uh, okay. You can see that. Uh, yeah, can see that now. Hold on. Can you see that? Yeah, can so see that, mate. Uh, it's the preparation from week to week. So, obviously, the last kick of the game uh, on the Saturday and then preparing for the next game, which would have been Portsmouth away. So, that was us a couple of years ago winning League Two. Uh, at the time, it was a, it was a fantastic achievement. Um, but I think now, looking at that achievement, we finished 17th. The three teams that came up with us, one was Luton, who have gone on yeah. again to the Championship. Yeah. The other was Coventry, who now have won League One and gone up yeah. to the Championship. And the other, Wickham. So, yeah. two seasons ago, we won the league. Um, <coughs> we haven't, we never recruited properly. Uh, we've had a lot of problems yeah. uh, pre-season, uh, which has held us back just a little bit uh, this season especially we haven't progressed as well as what we should have done yeah. but as I say that was us two seasons ago lifting the league to uh, title am I right um, in saying Jimmy that that at the end of that season you lost your top scorer was it um Billy, Simeon Billy, Billy Keyes had um, some problems some uh, mental health issues right. um, we also had uh, numerous players that got sold on as well yeah um, yeah our top striker went to Ipswich as well a couple of defenders went um and we we have we do need to sell players to um uh, because we do have uh, a very very low budget yeah um yeah. and we do at times we do have to sell players leon to yeah and yeah. um, to bring in much needed revenue for the club of course, um, of course. so as i say Last season, especially, was a really difficult uh, season for us. Not only with the virus, the way it, it uh, panned out, yeah. but with various other issues. Uh, our top two strikers, obviously, were injured. Billy Key, um, packed in playing football because of mental health issues. Yeah. And Sean yeah. McConville ruptured his uh, Achilles tendon. So our top two strikers from the last three or four seasons were missing. So yeah. we were... Uh, and we weren't a club that could bring in another top striker, uh, obviously through finance. Yeah, of course, of course. So anyway, we won League Two, and as I say, that league, that League Two was really strong that year. Which, you know, Luton went straight up, Coventry yeah. have gone up this season, and Wickham are now third in the league, Leon, yeah. and in the playoffs. Yeah, so that's right. It's 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 just shows you how strong that league was. Yeah, and then three teams that came up with us have done. Uh, Great achievement. Three might be in the championship next year. Fingers crossed, mate. You never know. Um, yeah, so this is our match day presentation. So, obviously, from the last kick of the game Saturday, yeah. I would then be looking at Portsmouth's result straight after the game. Okay. Trying to build a picture of who, who they played what kind of team they played, obviously the result. Um, and then that would build for an hour or two on a Saturday night, um, leading into Sunday. Now, Sunday is a... Uh, we, I've had many a discussion with other coaches and other managers. Uh, a lot of managers uh, like to bring the players in for a, a cool-down, um, massages, analysing games or whatever. We are more relaxed at Accrington, uh, John Coleman, John Doolan, and myself, um, in that we like to give them a little bit of time, a little bit of space, and give ourselves it. A lot of the players 
live an hour, an hour and a half, two hours away from the from the ground or the training ground. Now we we think that bringing them in for an hour and a half, traveling in to do a half an hour session or a pool or a cool down session to then travel back for an hour and a half. So we we trust in the players to go and do their own cool down uh, and spend Sundays uh, with the family relaxing uh, and trying to get something back into the legs. Not only that, giving the, the management a little bit of space um, to themselves to discuss the game and analyse the, the, the previous game themselves. That leads on to then the Monday. Now, Monday, there's this uh, 48-hour uh, cool-down period. And I think uh, the players have benefited. This is something that we brought in, and a lot of teams do this themselves. Um, they do a, a second-day cool-down, uh, which would consist of a little stretch of the legs, uh, pool session, bit on the bikes, uh, and then what we do, we, we analyse with the players individually the game that they played the previous game on the Saturday. Uh, okay. So that's Monday. The, the players that never played, the squad members um, who never played or the ones who weren't in the team, we would be doing a little bit more leg work, fitness work with them, assessing injuries, assessing form and this would generally be the staff doing all this uh, together and analysing uh, the game that was we've just played and then start building the picture Leon for the game that's coming up talking a little bit more about Portsmouth the next game that would uh, we'd be taking in uh, taking in for the Saturday coming okay. um, I personally would then start looking and analysing Portsmouth. I know, I know a lot about Portsmouth played uh, against them for the last seven, eight years. Um, I know the manager. I know the previous manager. I know the ethics of the club. I know quite a lot about Portsmouth uh, and how they like to play. Uh, and we'd be, I would then start building a picture of Portsmouth and who they are, what they, the way that they like to play and start building that uh, picture in my own head. So that a Tuesday, there'd be a bit more work on specific areas that we might think might be relevant for the up-and-coming game. So work on phase of plays, overloading in certain areas, on how Portsmouth play, and trying to uh, put a little bit of legwork into the, into the squad, and also but. At the same time, the players wouldn't know what we were really working on. We'd be replicating various things that could uh, affect the game on the Saturday. Uh, coming to the Wednesday, again, um, I think Wednesdays for us, if we haven't got a mid, if we haven't got a midweek game and we're going from Saturday to Saturday, Leon, Wednesday will be a day off for the players. All right. Um, you know. And the main thing for me would be for the for the managers, for the manager and the coaches to have a little bit of relaxation as well, as well as you know, because it's very, very intense. It could become seven days a week. And it's very important that the mindset of the management and the coaching staff is is right. Uh, yeah. and I age, and this is something that I've picked up. Uh, I've done my diploma in the football management. Uh, a couple of years ago, is switching off, Leon, being able to switch off, go and do something totally away from football. Now, that might be, you know, swimming, bike ride, golf, whatever. But yeah. I think um, it's very, very important that coaches and managers switch off and, and do something different away from football because it can get very, very intense and it can take over your life. Uh, so imagine, that's something. I could say to interrupt, Jimmy. So I can imagine. I mean, I remember speaking to a few players who were retiring, sort of over the last five years, sort of my era now, and the difference between sort of the English players who seem to take everything home with us. We seem to take, well, we used to 
seem to take everything home with us. You know, we get beat. Every everyone's getting at home. We're, we're in a mood until we can train or play again. And it was always the the lads from you know the continental lads who come over who were a bit more rounded and would go and seek maybe a bit of culture or something the day after a game. Um, so in 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 terms of uh, progression, would you say that's changed over the years, Jimmy? That that's changed, as you say. Sorry, you just went off then. That, Leon. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. What, what was that last um, the last question? What you said? Yeah, you I just, that, I just said that has, has that changed? You know, because as I say, English players generally, or British players, should I say, used to take everything home with them. It, you know, it follow you if you had a defeat that would follow you around probably until your next win. Um, yeah. Whereas now yeah, it's definitely a little more well-rounded. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's something as well. Um, myself and John Coleman, uh, we get very het up about results. And a lot of managers do. Uh, and the one thing that they do, they take the time off the players. So if you're on a bad run of results, usually they'll bring them in on a Sunday. They'll, they'll, they'll take away their days off on a Wednesday. Yes. Um, and I just think sometimes uh, the odd occasion you might do that, but on the whole, on the whole, I think you need a little bit of breathing space. You need to trust the players. You need to analyse why you got beat. Um, and sometimes, you know, the hard-handed um, way is not the best way. Uh, and I do feel as though you do need time away from football to reflect on things and to do something different. Uh, and as I say, that's something that we've, you know, we as a, as staff have done the last couple of years is that we very rarely bring the players in on the days off. Um, we do lose our heads. We do, you know, uh, analyse and sometimes overanalyse performances but we're at the mindset that if you played well and you got beat, eventually, if you keep playing well, you, the results will turn. And yeah. I don't think, you know, hitting the players with the stick and getting them in on the days off every single time uh, helps, Leon. No, of course not. Of course not. Just the, in terms of your preparation then, Jimmy, so we've got to Wednesday here, the players are having a day off, you're preparing video. Up until this point from the Saturday, how will you have used in stat? Um, how much will you have used in stat? I would have used it. Um, I would then be possibly after training Monday, after training Tuesday, I would be looking at various things. Obviously, this game that I'm analysing now would be Portsmouth away, which is a very trappy game anyway. Uh, I would be looking at their style of play on Instat, um, personnel, how do you like, how do you like to... Um, go forward, how they, how they defend, various things, and I'm building up this picture. And also, I would spend minimum two hours preparing a video off Instat uh, for the players on Thursday. Now, on Thursday, I like to pro produce a 15, 20-minute video uh, on ourselves defensively, how we're going to defend against Portsmouth, how they attack, um, and I'd take that then on Thursday into a training session, 11 v 11, build it up into 11 v 11. Uh, and I'll show you in my next couple of clips uh, how Portsmouth generally at home do like to play. Uh, and uh, I just forget about it and, uh, you know, try and enjoy your life as well because it, it, it really can become intense and it can, you know, health wise, it can be detrimental towards you. Of course, yeah. Of course. Okay. So we've gotten to the Thursday. Um, yeah, so the Thursday, I produced the video. Um, so in the morning, the players would come in Thursday. Um, they do their own stretching, uh, get trying to get themselves right for training. I would then produce a 15, 20-minute video I try not to go on more than that because obviously in that group of players, if you've got a squad of 25, obviously you've got uh, some players who who haven't had many uh, minutes on the field. You've got players, 10, 11 players who uh, played on the Saturday really being, and then you've got 
possibly another five, six, seven players who think they're not even part of the squad. So it's important that you try and keep everyone together, close-knit, uh, keep the videos interesting um, and get get to your point, really, and then take that onto the training ground, Leon. OK. So, obviously, the next clip, that would be the game. And then I'd start showing them uh, the formations that Portsmouth have played. This is the last three games. I usually do a little bit more. I possibly might do the last five or six, but this is the last three games. So you can see the Rochdale game, um, third to last game at home. They play the 4 2 3 1 system now at home. They generally like to play this system. You can see the Rochdale played more of a 4 4 2 system, um, possibly with a number 10 dropping in there. Uh, and we generally play that that way. Uh, so I might highlight a few things in my video on the way Rochdale played against them. Um, but concentrating more on Portsmouth, this is how they started the game, this is how they ended the game. They've got quite a big squad, they've got uh, players in depth who can come in at the drop of a hat uh, uh, and not weaken the team or the squad. So, the, as I say, they generally like to play a 4 2 3 1. They went away the week later to uh, Peterborough and got beat 2 0. Now, they've got Portsmouth have got the best home form in the league. They're very, very strong at home. Um, and they're in the position that they are because of the home, uh, home form. So, they went away to Peterborough. They played a different formation and got beat 2, two 0. So then they played Fleetwood uh, in midweek on the Tuesday and we were playing them then on the Saturday. So they went back to the 4-2-3-1 system, Leon. Uh, and I think the, what he played was the strongest squad that he had available to him. But I am now looking because he's got, um, I think he had Burgess coming back from suspension. He had a couple of others from injury. So I would have thought that, depending on that result, if he had a positive result, he may keep the same team. But um, I think it was Christian Burgess was out suspended for a couple of games. So I was thinking then that he might bring him back in uh, and play him instead of um, Bolton or Watmore in the right right side of defence. Okay. I'd then go on to uh, how the attack style of play and the formation that they play. Now, over the, the last two or three years, um, particularly under Paul Cook, they like to play out from the back. Every time they got it, they like to play out from the back. This is something that I've watched from afar. Obviously, Kenny Jackett comes in and has done really well again. But the one thing that I notice on it is that they go long a little bit uh, they're a little bit more direct, so they don't really play out from the back. They like to get the ball down in the, in the opposition's half and play. So this is the, the kind of video that will play. So this is them in attack, the way that they set up. Straight away, I see the full-backs pushing on. Two centre-halves, don't even look. Not looking to play out. And they are uh, back to front, more long passes. Up to the forwards, you see the two central midfielders flick on, not necessarily by the forward this time, but there's the three forwards all in and around the box. McGeehan, central midfielder, vacating the midfield, getting to the edge of the box, results in a great chance. So that's the style of play again. Winning possession in the opposition's half, they like to play. And there's the front three. This time, not, not a long ball. When the ball's in the opposition half, they get the ball down and play. Overlap, overlap and full-backs. Into the midfield, two. Always them two in there. If anything, McGeehan's gone. There's the full-backs pushing really on. 
and the protection comes from the two central midfielders. I like to play all their football in the opponent's half. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Leon. Leon, they're a very good team. There you go. Full back, overlapping, yeah. ball in. McGeoch coming in. There he is, central midfielder, and a great chance again. So I'd be picking up on things like this all the time, telling the players this is how they like to play. Wide again, defender facing his own goal, ends in a goal. As I say, this was against Fleetwood, top of the table clash. And they like to play. The ball's in the opposition half, they like to play. Yeah. Wide man coming in. They like to go long if they can, so they can mix it up. They're a very good team. And there you go, cutting inside again. Ending up with a shot on target. Strong in defence. And breaking again. Left-hand side forward coming in. So very good team. So I would, that was just the last game. I possibly showed them, Leon. Um, that was against playing a 4-3-3 system. So I would, if we weren't going to go with that, if we went with a 4-1-4-1 system or a 4-4-1-1 system, I would show them possibly the Rochdale game uh, before that, the last home game, and highlight a few things in there. Uh, obviously, that's my Thursday presentation. Um, and I would show them on Thursday all their attacking and how we've got to defend. So, sorry, just to show this one. This is the set plays four. And how do you like, they just get this one wrong? This was the first one they took, they get it completely wrong. Second one, left footer, left back, in swinger, great delivery. Five attacking it. And there they are. Five players going into the six yard box. Two on the edge, two stay back. In, in the goal. You see Raggett stayed up, centre, centre half stayed up. Great ball in, great movements, and a good goal. Second half. I think Fleetwood brought everyone back, so they put six players into the box. So these are the kind of things that you're just trying to pick up on, Leon. Um, when when they're behind or when they they need to score, they put extra man in the box. There you go, six and seven men in the box, and they do this especially at home. Recycle the ball really well, don't they? Got a good team. Got a very good team, Leon. The ball in again and you see them all all in that six yard box all trying to score same ball in again so it's something again second second phase the centre halves and the danger men stay up so that's that's the kind of thing I would be looking on on a Thursday I would make that about 15, 20 minutes long. Um, try not to go on too much. I have got a tendency to, to go on and on, Leon. <laughs> and the players, I do so, sometimes have to wake the players up. But, um, over the years, over the years, it comes with a, a little bit of experience of um, knowing who's going to be interested. Maybe if the players, some players are not going to be travelling on the Saturday and May, um, excuse them or not not bring them into the meeting because you know you don't want you don't want any ne negative vibes. Yeah. Uh, so I might might send them down with the U team to do 15, 20 minutes with them before we go down. Uh, right. So that's the Thursday session. Then go down to the training ground and work on things, uh, building up to eleven v eleven, all defensive work. How we're going to defend. Uh, and then build the session up to 11 v 11 um, and then possibly let it play out uh, the last five or ten minutes into 
just 11 v 11 attack, attack for your defence. Say the, the Friday session then would be all the offensive work. I would show uh, Portsmouth. I'll just come off that now. I would just show uh, Portsmouth uh, how they defend, uh, counter attacks against them, set plays, how they set up for corners uh, against, and I'd work on completely opposite and what I've showed them there. Then, obviously, go into the training ground and work on all the offensive work, uh, com completely flip it on its head. Mm. Uh, so that that would be that would take us to Friday. Uh, obviously, if it was away at Portsmouth, we would travel down after the training session or we would do that training session at the hotel or somewhere near the hotel. Um, and then, uh, which would just take us to... Uh, can you see that, Leon? Have a, the key, yeah. key point. Have I shared the screen there? Can you see that? No, I can't see it yet, mate. Just... Sorry. Uh, let's just... See if I can come back to that. Sorry, share screen. Uh, anyway, just a, all it was, I was just going to say, um, at, my key points would be, at the end of that, would be going to Fratton Park, really tight, old-fashioned ground, great atmosphere, great supporters, very good team. Would have to be our our best, Leon. Yeah. Uh, have to keep the ball, um, possibly play a system that we might have to get the ball down and play and relieve pressure. Um, forwards would be massive for us uh, in keeping the ball, um, and that's what Billy Key was fantastic for us. We missed him last season. Yeah. Uh, he he would he he'd buy a foul. He'd relieve pressure and he would keep the ball yeah. for us. Yeah. <coughs> uh, key points. Fratton Park, Pompey on a great run, uh, great home form, the system that they like to play, go through that. Yeah. Um, and as I say, the last 12 months, 18 months, Portsmouth have changed the philosophy. Um, not scared to go route one. Uh, when they do go route one or play long passes, they do get three players in and around the ball behind the striker, uh, along with an attacking midfielder, and they're very good at it. Uh, set plays, they're also very good, Leon. Okay. Just in your preparation there, Jimmy, are there any circumstances yeah. under which you might take a more individualistic approach um, in terms of your uh, showing examples of a team? Um, yeah, yeah. If, if like, um, on the opposition, do you mean, Leon? Yeah, on the opposition. Yeah, if they've got, uh, no, a striker who is very good and in very good uh, form, I would possibly show uh, our defenders his movements, uh, how he likes to attack his strongest foot, mm. um, where, you know, crosses come into the box, uh, where he likes to go. From set plays, I would I would show them individually, especially if they um, say like I showed the goal there that Raggett scored. I would say for our defender who was marking him, don't go to sleep when they recycle the second ball, um, because he does stay up and he does go in there. As you say, sometimes you've got defenders who just switch off and think no second phase. I've done my job, so I would show them uh, on instat. Uh, all his uh, attacking uh, prowess yeah. and things that he's very good at. Okay. And, and in terms of um, the other lads who are involved, so you've got the manager, the, the, the goalkeeping coach. 15 coach, John Doolan, does a very yeah. good job. Um, he would do, he'd do a lot of the set plays, what I showed you there. Okay. Um, and he'd do a lot of the uh, analysis, self-analysis, one-to-one, uh, along with John and along with myself wow. um, throughout the week. Uh, and he does have a big input as well, John Doolan, on his um, on the uh, on the coaching side as well. OK. OK. And how, do you, do, um, 
the, does the manager require a different sort of job from you as the as the goalkeeping coach would and as a physio would and anyone involved in fitness? Do they require different things from you or is it sort of generalised information? From me? Well, the, the goalkeeper coach has got a... Um, he can he can go on the uh, Instat Scout. He's got his, his own login. Uh, the manager has. I have. John Doolan has as well. So, you know... The goalkeeping coach will work, obviously, on the goalkeeper. Um, you know, free kicks, penalties, crosses that come in, various things like that. Um, uh, and as I say, John Doolan, uh, John Coleman, the manager, they will do one-to-one work. Uh, and I will generally do the team play uh, and the formation and how Portsmouth thought on how the opposition are going to line up. Uh, and do the coaching on that as well, on the Thursday and Friday especially. And how does it affect your preparation if you've got a midweek game? Because obviously the, the, the time between the matches is, is a lot shorter then. How does that affect your preparation in those terms? Well, it, well, it makes it a lot harder. Um, obviously, uh, your, Sunday, your Sunday would then become your Wednesday. Uh, so... I spoke about trying to get yourself some time away from football and all that. It would be a lot harder. So when you've got two two games for this coaching staff, it becomes a lot harder. It becomes more or less becomes seven days a week, Leon. Right. Um, where the Sunday you would be analysing uh, and doing videos, uh, compiling videos and uh, getting things ready for Monday, which would be the you know, obviously the game before the uh, the day before the game. So yeah. you'd be preparing all what I've showed you that I do on a Thursday and Friday would be more or less in one day on a on a Monday. Okay. As well as having a cool down, as well as trying to get the legs back into the team, as well as assessing your injuries, form, opposition. That would all be done on, on the Sunday for the presentation on the Monday. Um and possibly I spoke about having your 48 hour cool down period. We would be walking through things on a Monday in preparation for the game on the Tuesday. Okay. And then um, obviously, that, that takes <laughs> the, you, you know, you're going to have another game on the Saturday. So you then got to prepare. You'd have your Wednesday off for the players. Uh, and Thursday would be 48 hour cool down period, assessing uh, the squad. Uh, form and the opposition again, so you you know, you, but it it just condenses a lot of things, Leon. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I've got a question from uh, one of our viewers here. James McFarlane has asked, um, "Does Jimmy use video at half time in the dressing room?" We've just started to use it. Um, we got a we've got a young lad, an intern from um, the local univers- uh, university, and he started filming the games for us. Uh, the seasons that that's just finished uh, and key points, and he he can put them then onto the laptop or onto the TV in the in the changing room for half time. So if we want to, you know, look at something, uh, we can do that. So that's something that we've only just started, which is beneficial for us. But it, it, it's uh, it's very good that we can do that. As I say, we we're, we're a we're a club that are. Uh, we're, we're, we're still learning, we're still moving forward uh, and we're still gaining, you know, a lot of uh, experience at League One level. Uh, but that is, as I say, it's a, it's a very good question. It's, it's very ben- beneficial for us. OK. And in terms of Insta itself, um, obviously you've got all those clips together. What, what features of the platform do you use mostly, would you say, in terms of your preparation? Um, I would watch. I'd watch the game. The first and foremost, if we were playing uh, Portsmouth, I would watch the game, ball and play, which is a very good uh, mode that Instat have, which cuts your game time down from, you know, ninety minutes, possibly a hundred minutes, cuts it down to about, I think the ball in play is about forty-eight minutes. Right. So it, you know, it can cut it more or less in half, Leon. Okay. Uh, the ball in play. That would be my first step for the Sunday. I'd watch their last game, 
start assessing um, who was available, did they have any injuries, um, various things like that on the opposition. So that's that's the first and foremost. After that, as I say, when I'm working on the um, attack, the uh, Portsmouth offense, I would be saying and looking at um, the platform that I use is uh, counter attacks, various things. You can you there's there's that many good things on Insta now. You can just click on and you can see like. You know, to the attack more on the left hand side, more on the right hand side. So you could just click on on whatever uh, entries into the final third, where the crosses come in, you know, balls from back to front. You can click on whatever you want, Leon. So you can yeah. build up the picture from what you've seen at the previous matches uh, and what the strengths are going forward. Okay, absolutely. And do you ever have any requests from your own players in terms of footage or stats for them to look at yeah. themselves? Yeah, yeah, oh, they're very good. Um, they've really bought into this, especially since we've gone within stat, uh, which is the last, I think, last three years. It was very, very beneficial to us winning the league, uh, going within stat. Um, the players love, absolutely love analysing themselves. And as I say, from the from the last game, we would take John Doolan would take about three or four players, John Coleman would take three or four, and I'd take about three or four and would analyse their performances um over the Monday and Tuesday and show them various things where things that they've done right, things that they can improve on. Um and things collectively as a group, you know, for defenders as a defensive midfielder going forward, how we like to go forward, things that we're being good at. So as as groups and as individual players, we we do that collectively as well. Right. Okay. Okay. So uh, there's no more questions from the uh, the viewers. I'll just wait another couple of minutes and see if anyone else. Has any questions for you? In terms of the future, Jimmy, you know, what does it look like for you guys uh, in terms of your aspirations? Are you going to make a big push for the championship? Is it something that's in your minds or are you consolidating? Well, for those that know Accrington and those that don't, we're a, a very, very small uh, club. Uh, ground capacity is only 5,000. Uh, to be in League One is a massive, massive achievement. With what Wickham have done this season, um, is is unbelievable. To you know, the the rivals that are uh, they've got a, a, a similar budget, I think, to what we have, and they've, you know, Gareth Ainsworth has done absolutely magnificent. So is, that's been an inspiration for all all clubs, uh, smaller clubs that they can uh, Fleetwood another one that have done really well this season under Joey Barton. Yeah. Um, some abs- and to have them two in the playoffs is is brilliant for the league. So, obviously, the recruitment is going to be massive. Uh, when we can recruit now with what's gone on this season with the virus, when the season's going to start is a big, big issue for us because we can't start offering contracts or uh, to players until we know what the EFL are going to do in terms of when the season's going to start, Leon. And uh, when when we know that, we can then start planning pre-season and recruitment as well. Obviously, we know we've we've released quite a few, and we're gonna we're gonna need to sign um, at least five, six, seven players next season. So the recruitment has already started in terms of offering players contracts. Um, we, we can only be governed on the government and the EFL and know when when we can uh, yeah. and when the season's going to start. That's that's a big, big issue that's uh, around at the minute. Right. OK. Well, listen, myself and everyone at Instat, wishes you all the best of luck in the future, mate. We, we watch from afar. I've watched Accrington uh, since the, uh, the milk bottle advert. Um, <laughs> Show me your age now, Leon. <laughs> Show me your age, baby. I'm, I'm, listen, mate, I'm, I'm telling you, um, 
no, it's, it's it's been a pleasure watching the club go from strength to strength. And although you, there's been a bit of a yo-yo, you're in the league, you're in the mix. Um, and, you know, hopefully Instat can help you guys get to where you need to. Yeah, yeah, they have, as I say, they've been, I think the platform, Instat platform is, is very, very good. It helps me immensely. Uh, it's a, a very, very good um, website to analyse not only teams, but now recruitment as well, mm. because you can you can pull up any player, get the playing history, mm-hmm. uh, and see everything about that player. So yeah. it's a it's a great it's a great format, um, and as I say, I've been more than more than happy to have used it and to use it in the future. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, thanks very much for that, Jimmy. It's been really insightful. Loads of information there for everyone to chew on. The, every, everyone's got their own uh, match day preparation. Yeah. Mine and our club has evolved. Um, I've been very, very lucky that um, we've been allowed to make a lot of mistakes. And it's something that management isn't allowed to do now. I think the, the average lifespan of a manager is 11 months I think it is now Liam which is absolutely yeah. diabolical yeah. to give and, and we've been on the the, re, uh, the receiving end of that we went to Rochdale mm-hmm. and uh, lasted 11 months ourselves um, yeah. and got sacked and went back to, eventually went back to Accrington after mm-hmm. having a couple of years away uh, but we, we've evolved into into this and we've made as I say, we've made a lot of mistakes and we've learned from our mistakes. And luckily enough, we've got a, a fantastic chairman that's there now, Andy Alt, uh, yeah. and chairmans before Eric Wallies, Peter Marsdens, uh, who have let us make mistakes and have been 100% behind us uh, and had full faith in what we were doing. And I think that really helps. And it's something that, you know, a lot of managers don't get now, uh, Leon and I think it's a, a real shame because there's a lot of managers who have fell by the wayside who, who are, I know would have made great, great managers but haven't been uh, given that chance. It certainly is a shame. Uh, it's the way football's gone, isn't it? I mean, yeah. everyone wants instant success now. Everyone wants everything now. And we all know success takes time, especially in football. It you does. might get a, a decent season. Um, but, you know, to build a, a legacy, to build a structure and a culture at a club, you know, that's that's going to take years. It is. You know, I don't know. It sounds as though you're a, a Man United fan or from Manchester area. <laughs> and you know, the greatest, one of the greatest managers ever, you know, yeah. it took him three or four years, didn't it? Was yeah, it, Alex? it yeah. yeah. You know, he, he was given the chance a long time ago. Uh, we were given the chance a long time ago by Accrington. We were there for 13, 14 years before we left. Yeah, and as I say, we made a lot of mistakes, and I know Alex Ferguson did in the start. Um, but I just wish that owners and chairmen uh, wouldn't chop and change as much as they do. Have faith. You pick them. I've give them a little bit more time. Um, yeah. And as I say, you know, they might mature into unbelievable managers. For sure. I think that's very interesting that you mentioned Sir Alex Ferguson there in, in those terms. And I think people forget as well, it didn't take him, I mean, it took him three, four years to, to start winning things at United. But he was a winner before then. You know, he'd won with Aberdeen. He'd been at yeah. St. Mirren and, and um, made a culture there. Um, so for me, I, I, when I look at managers, I look at the, the, their uh, track record. You know, what's the track record like in terms of the clubs they've looked after? Um, the kids that they've bought through at clubs and the signings that they've made and the successes they've had, and off the back of that, I would, I I would apportion time, you know, on the on the back end. If they're having a hard time, give them an extra six to twelve to eighteen months to get this right. At the end of the day, you've got to bring somebody else in. They'll be there eighteen months maybe, and then they're off again. So you might as well give the manager that you've believed in initially time. That's right. That's right. And it, it, it becomes a lottery, doesn't it? You know, Liverpool have had it for the last 30 years. Mm. Trying to, you know, win the league. Uh, you give the managers, they, they do generally give them a little bit more time um, at Liverpool, you know, 
but it's been a cycle. It's three or four years, yeah. change the manager. Three or four years, change the manager. Mm-hmm. Um, and who's to say, you know, Brendan Rodgers, Kenny Daglish, is, that they wouldn't have gone on and won the leagues the next season. But, you know, they fell by the wayside. Man United became great again because of Sir Alex and the mm-hmm. fact that they gave him, um, you know, three or four years to get it right. Uh, and obviously he did in the end and, you know, he's one of the greatest managers that's ever lived. So that's what I'm, you know, you've got to believe in your managers. You've got to, um, that relationship between manager and chairman has got to be top draw. Mm. Um, it, it really has. It's got to be tight as anything. Uh, and once you start losing that, but then once you start going into the top, top league, Leon, Money is a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. You're falling out that that the pressure of falling out the Premiership yeah. is is that's why they you know they chop and change so much at the top level, um, and you know even the knock on effect uh, Championship down to League One, they, they all they all do, don't they? As soon as they get in trouble, the one thing that they want to do is change the manager, and sometimes it, it's not always the best result. No, for sure. And and on that as well, I, I guess people don't really think of this, but when we say change manager, you're changing our whole backroom staff. You know, you, you, you're you not just getting rid of, of one person who replaces them with one, you, you're getting rid of 10, 15, some clubs, yeah. um, and, and bringing the same amount in. So you, you, It's really the philosophy got... of the club as well, Leon. Then again. Know, different styles, different ways of playing, you know... I'm a, I'm a massive Liverpool fan and I just use like Brendan Rodgers who was total football. Yeah. Um, and, you know, at that time he had um, Carroll, Carroll up front. Now, yeah. All he wanted to do was turn his back on the play and get himself in the box. They yeah. paid a lot of money for him. Brendan Rodgers comes in, stays away, bang, he's gone. Yeah. So it's costing them, you know, the different styles of play. He was the main striker at the time. It's styles of play that's totally changed. You know, when um, Carroll played for Liverpool, he turned his back, he, he ran to the far post, he wanted balls into the box. All of a sudden, Brendan Rodgers comes in and it was total football. It was playing through the thirds, playing through the lines, breaking lines. So he fell by the wayside. Doesn't make him a bad player, but that's chopping and changing managers. Not only that, you've got to then go out and play, you know, sign uh, strikers or players to play the way that you want to play. So it could also cost the club a lot of money, not yeah. only to pay the last manager off, but to give the new manager a massive budget to, you know, uh, go on for the success that he wants. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, just out of interest, you, what is your favourite team? Is it the Rogers team or is it the team, Jurgen Klopp's team now? Because the Rogers team had, with Suarez and Coutinho in it, was frightening when it was ready. Uh, it was a great team. It was a great team. Um, but as I say, Klopp has took it to another level now. I think it was he was right for Liverpool at the right time. Mm. Um, I didn't know how to take him at first. I didn't know whether he was the this nutty professor or he was unbelievably in, intellectual and, and knew everything mm. and was brilliant. I didn't know. And I think a lot of Liverpool fans were like that. Um, but the proof of the pudding's in eating. Yeah. And it's it's getting them results, getting on a roll, everything then snowballs. You know, we've yeah. been in league uh, winning positions and had squads that when you're winning, your job becomes so easy. When you've got good players, it becomes so easy. And that recruitment of players is everything. Wow. It's absolutely everything. Yeah. And I think at the top level, you've got um, scouting systems, um, players that become available top, top players in the world. Yeah. And it's about, if you've got the money, it's about just picking the right ones. I think managers in lower levels, League One, League Two, I think that's, it's a lot of hard work in that, you know, picking the right player, um, someone to fit in the way that you want to play is not always the way. You end up with a squad and sometimes you have to change your philosophy on the way that you, you want to play. We've done it many a time. We've gone from a back three to, you know, a back five, a, a back four, a midfield three, a midfield four, a defence. We've changed um, 
because we've had to, and we, you know, after eight or nine games of the season, we've gone, this isn't working, and we've had to change it completely just because we can't afford to bring a top player in that position. Mm-hmm. We've had to, you know, change our way of thinking and playing because of the squad that we've got or uh, or that we've had. So in those terms, then you'd would would you say that when you go into a football club, your philosophy is shaped by the type of players you've got at the club and the culture that exists there in the first yeah. instance? Yeah, and then definitely. You change it for yourself. Definitely, we you know we made the playoffs in two thousand eleven, eleven twelve, I think it was, and we played. Um, what it was was John Goldman went over to the World Cup in South Africa in 2010, and he and he seen the way that Spain played, and he watched a few games over there, and he came back to me, and he went, right, I want us to become Spain, and I was laughing, I was laughing my head off at him. <laughs> I went with Accrington Stanley, and he was going, no, I want us to play like Spain, I want us to play like Spain. Okay. And I was going, oh my God, these are world champions, John. I said, what are yeah. you going on about? But then and it, we, we signed a couple of players um, and we ended up playing a, you know, a 4 2 3 1 system, similar to what uh, the way that um, Portsmouth were playing before. Uh, and we played that and we made, we made the playoffs. That season, we, we never went up. The next season, we lost eight players, wow. eight or nine players. So the following season, we wanted to play the same way. Oh, that was brilliant. We had a great season. We're going to play. We just couldn't. We just yeah. couldn't. We'd lost our best players and we couldn't replace them. So we ended up, the next season, we ended up playing a 4-3-3 system. Mm-hmm. So, and that was, and we changed that after about eight or nine games. Went, this 4-2-3-1 is not working. We're not the same team as last year. So then we looked at our squad, reassessed it, uh, and went with a completely different system because of the squad that we had well brought in um, and the players that were in form at the time. So we ended up changing, but I think that's that's a sign of a you know good manager that you can change and change philosophies and change the way that you play. Okay, I've just got a question. Um, we'll take last, one last question if that's all right, Jimmy. If you've got the time. Yeah, go on. Uh, so uh, Lucas Kramer has asked. Does Jimmy prefer scouting players from abroad or does he prefer uh, UK-based players, British players? Uh, either or. We've had, um, we've had a bit of success uh, with both, really. With, you know, the very first one that we brought over uh, from France was a, a lad called Romy Bocho, who was yeah. captain of Benin mm-hmm. uh, in the African Nations uh, and he, we, we brought him over uh, from France when he was 17, 18. And he turned out to be an absolute legend for the club. Um, yeah. Obviously, more closer to home, we know the players that are at, at home. But we have brought a lot of foreign players in. Yeah. Um, we do generally like to bring them in on trial um, and have a look at them first, uh, foreign players, because obviously we... We haven't got a great scouting network. Uh, we haven't. We we do a lot of the scouting ourselves as staff. Um, so we bring them over for a couple of weeks, uh, and we'll have a look at them there. But we're not scared to bring any foreign players in um, and look at them and sign them as well. We've had a lot of very very good foreign players come over to Accrington. Great stuff. Great stuff. Okay, that seems our hours up, Jimmy. Um, I think we've we've exhausted the questions from the from the audience. Uh, As I say, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, this is just a little insight and in how we've done it and how we've evolved into what we are today. Um, and I know, you know, someone might just pick up a little something. That's what I do. I like listening to other managers, other coaches, and picking one little tiny thing up here and there. How we do it, and maybe you know, take it into what they do, or you know, not even do that. But this, that, as I say, this was just an insight in in how we've we've done things at Accrington uh, and how we've evolved. Thank you, Jimmy. Honestly, it's, uh, it's been really informative, and I'm sure the viewers will, would agree. Um, you know, there's information there that is just not available in the public in the public domain. So 
Um, thank you very much and thank you for your time today. Thanks, Leon.